Hi guys. So in this video, I actually have done two sessions for you. The first one is with a two and a half year old little girl. And yeah, that's a lot. Very difficult to shoot two year olds as I'm sure those of you who have tried know. Very, very short attention span, not really great at following directions. And you have about a 10 to 15 minute window to get everything done. So the first look that I did with her, I actually used my Stella Pro Light CLX 10 with the little dome diffuser and an umbrella. Now this light I find really mimics daylight. Like it really looks like a window light, especially when you shoot wide open. I shot with my Sony 50 millimeter at f1.2, so super shallow depth of field and really truly did look like window light. And I will show you that look. But the main look that I wanted to try and achieve for this video was this picture here. Now, this is an image that I prompted in mid journey. However, I did overpaint it because as we all know, mid journey is not perfect and it wasn't perfect so i perfected it in post it's very digital artish um, it's certainly not a photograph but i loved 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 the light and in the prompt i used you know in the stylings of rembrandt which gave me this pose the little tilt of the head and the light so i thought to myself you know i want to see if i can replicate this light using studio strobes so i used my ellen crom 500 pro and a Mola Demi white beauty dish. So the inside of the beauty dish is white and I also used a white grid. Now, why do I use a white grid? I use a white grid because it's less harsh. Um, the transitions are a little smoother. They're not quite so what, like when you use a black one. So I use that and um, with the little two and a half year old, I got, I think maybe four minutes max shoot time using the beauty dish, she was just over it. And there's nothing more that you can do. But I, I think I did get one or two good pictures of her. Now, the second one was Marita. You've seen me shoot her before. She loves posing for me and she is a little bit of a clown, super fun to shoot, but she always delivers. And I'm really, really excited to show you those ones because they turned out amazing. And also I'm using my new Sony a7R5 in this. And honestly, people, this camera is just ridiculous. The clarity, the sharpness, the ability to focus better, everything. I thought it was great before when I had the Sony um, a7R 3 Sony a7R 4 So now I'm, I've kept my Sony a7R 4 for video and as a second camera, and I sold my Sony a7R 3 and a bunch of lenses so that I could buy the a7R 5 because here in Canada, the a7R 5 is $5,500. Yes. You folks down in America have no idea how lucky you are to earn American dollars and to have to spend on items like this because for us every single thing that we buy is a 30 to 35 percent markup so you know it's way more expensive for us it sucks but anyway um yeah so i'm going to do that additionally i'm going to really quickly just zip through a speed edit of the retouching on an image of marita and then after that i'm going to show you how i use one of my floral overlays and it's just a super super simple technique using a floral overlay as well as a couple pieces of grass and weeds and that pretty much ties it all together it's not one of my elaborate floral overlay images that you see where i actually create depth and dimension and put florals over top of the subject all that it's not like that but this is still good and this is super easy that anybody can do in under five minutes so stay tuned for that and at the end i will show you all the images that i edited from this shoot and i hope you enjoy it it was fun to do and let's get into it. So here we are with Layla. She's two and a half. And you can see I have a little chicken squeaky toy behind my back. Because when two or three year olds don't really pay attention to me, I can always squeeze it and that'll get their attention. I don't typically show it to them because then they'll want it. Now you'll also see that I place Layla on top of, it is actually like an end table and I covered it in black velvet and the reason for this is because it keeps them kind of immobile and as we all know two-year-olds tend to want to run around and go crazy and not sit still and this kind of just forces them to sit still it's a little too high for them to jump down on their own 
but she was super good with posing. She followed my direction far better than other two-year-olds that I've worked with. I really wish that I would have shot the first look with the beauty dish because she gave me at least seven to eight minutes right here and I would have been much happier had I had that kind of opportunity with the second light setup. So that's sad but it is what it is and I should have thought about it but you know <laughs> I don't shoot a lot of, a lot of two-year-olds for obvious reasons. But she was wonderful and what I love about the CLX 10 is it really, when you shoot in studio with a huge umbrella like I did, it really, really looks like window light. So if you're going for that window light look, this is definitely something that you want to grab for your arsenal. But I will show you a couple of the edits from this particular scene. Um, it wasn't in relation to, you know, what I was trying to achieve for this video, but I did want to show it to you as well. Today we're going to shoot Merida. You've all seen her before. She's a very good model, which is why I got her. And we're going to do that really super high contrast light that's going to work really well for this painterly portrait. High contrast meaning beauty dish. I'm using a white grid, so not a black grid. It's white, so it's softer light. It's very contrasty, but it's less harsh. Um, I am shooting today with the Sony A7R. So excited. I'm also using, as always, my 50 millimeter 1.2 by Sony, which is obviously now my favorite lens in the world. So let's get to it. Hey, Marita. Ready, set? Go. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's give it one, one more try, girl. Turn your face this way for me and chin up a bit and tilt more this way. Too much come back just a bit yeah right there good enough okay so what we've done is we have set up the beauty dish so that it's literally pointing at her it's super super high contrast i added a silver reflector because it was just too pure black hair we're going for really really contrasting light so we want those dark dark shadows and those bright highlights so that's how you get this look cross your legs sweetie good we're going to just turn this so we see the pretty side of the flowers, like this. Can you turn your head this way for me? Good. Good job. And sit straight. So back straight. Sit up straight. There you go. Good. Put this hand right there. Beautiful. And turn your face this way. And then turn your chin towards your shoulder. Chin, not your top of your head. Yeah. And now tilt your head this way, on this side. You got it. <coughs> So Marita is super good at this now because I've been shooting her for a while. And this is my Sony a7R5 and I <laughs> haven't mastered the menu yet, so I don't have playback enabled, which I'll have to do. Ready? Do it again. So I'm going for that really Good job. I still need your face turned this way a little bit. Yeah. You know what I might do actually, sweetie, is I'll just turn you. It's probably easier for you. Actually, scoot your whole body this way. Exactly. Mic check. Mic check. Okay, turn. Stand up for a sec. Now turn your body this way. Doot, doot, doot. Now sit. Yeah. Sit all the way back like you were last time. So much better. So, so, so much better. Sit up straight. Nice, that looks so much better. Okay, now tilt. Close your mouth, baby. 
Perfect. Perfect. I'm gonna take these from you. I'll just do a couple different ones. That's cute. Keep doing that. Sit up really straight for me. Good job. Chin down just a little bit and tilt this way for me now. Look at you. Look at you. Chin up like this and now tilt this way. Yep, right there. Don't move. Stay right there. Okay, your other hand, that one that has the pretty bracelet on it. Yes. Can you go like this now for me? So the tops of your fingers are going to touch the, bo yeah, the bottom of your jaw right here. There you go. Just like that. Perfect. And now, yeah, I like that. Put your hand down there. Yeah, just like that and kind of lean into it for me. Yeah, and now tilt this way with your head. Yeah, a little bit more. And now chin down. Look at this girl. Turn your face this way. Yeah, right there. Come back a bit. Right there, chin up a bit. And tilt this way for me. Chin up. Chin down a little bit. And bring your hand back towards your neck. So down, go lower, and then back towards your neck. Yeah, good job. Can you close your mouth for me? Beautiful. Nice. Okay, now I want you to take both of your hands and I just want you to put them on your neck. So underneath your hair, go underneath the hair. Yeah, like that. Good job. And then just go like this. Yeah, too much. Come back just a bit. Yeah, and put your hands all the way on your neck, not your face. And then drop those elbows. Yeah, good. Chin up and tilt. Uh, that's perfect. Stay right there. Good job. Can you look at my hand? Yep. Sit up really straight. Good girl. Tilt a little bit this way. A little bit too much. Go back a bit. Right there. Perfect. Close your mouth. And look at my hand. Right there. Don't move. So the reason that I'm having her look at my hand is because if you look at those digital paintings, they tend to always look off camera as opposed to right into the lens of the painter or the artist, right? Good girl, I'm glad you, you caught that. Good job. Let's do that again, turn that. Perfect, okay, yeah, do that just like that. Good girl, you're doing so good, hun. Love it. Love it. Okay, I want your eyes to look right here. Turn your face, turn your face. Yep, but eyes right here. Up. Right there, don't move. Eyes right there, yep. So when I do that, it actually looks more like the old style of... Look right here. Yep. Now turn your face this way and look here. Tilt a little bit this way, right there. Look right here. Gosh, she's so good. She's so good. Okay, so I have finished all of the retouching. It's basically finished now. All I typically ever do is run exposure, do some color grading. This is where I would add a floral backdrop if I was going that route. And the, the great thing about shooting on a dark background like this is it's super easy to add the florals like I have in my store. So I'm gonna show you really quick how you would do that. Run it through exposure, some color grading and we will be done. So this is a recent floral I made using AI and all that I do is grab it, put it over top of my subject. Oops. The first thing you need to do when you are doing these is make sure that you change or convert your color profile from sRGB 
to whatever color profile you're working at currently in Photoshop. So for me, that's Pro Photo. And I have to do that because if I drag the image onto this one and I don't change the color profile, it looks way too saturated and yucky. So that's always your first step. And now we're just gonna resize it, something like that. And then typically what I do, if I'm not going to do an actual full floral composite, like you've seen me do in other images, I'm just gonna pull that up there and there. Then all I typically do is just reduce the opacity, something like that, right about there. And then I just add a mask, so Alt Option Mask, and I'll just lightly brush that in, typically with a flow around 50, and I just start from the edges, working around. And when I get close to the subject, I just am really careful not to go over top of the subject. This is the quickest and easiest way to use my floral overlays. Um, I recently taught a Zoom course on how I do my advanced florals where it looks 3D, it looks like the foliage is actually surrounding her and over overlapping her and things like that um i've had a lot of people reach out asking when i'm doing another one but i promised my students that i wouldn't because i find that whenever there's like a new kind of different style coming out like my florals then everybody wants to do it and then all of a sudden everybody's doing it and social media is completely saturated with it and that's the last thing that I want to do. I'm excited that I've, you know, created a concept and way of doing things that pretty much no one else is really doing. However, it's not something that I want everybody to do. It's nice to have a look that's a little bit unique to every other type of photography that you see out there. So that's what I'm doing and I'm sticking to it so yeah this is this is how you do it and before and after do you see how it just adds that little bit of oomph to your image and I just I don't know I'm kind of obsessed with these now and for all these portraits that I do it's just such a beautiful way to embellish and make something look so unique and so pretty and everybody that I shoot for clients right now, everybody wants it. So clearly I'm doing something right. Now I'm not sure if I like this big leaf down here. So I think I'm going to brush that away. And I know that if I go back to this image here, I do have this little piece that I cut out. So I'm going to throw that on. because it's this corner. And now what I can do is just grab this right about there. Same thing, so I'm gonna reduce the opacity like about there and Alt Option Mask and now I can just add that little piece over here. And that looks pretty good. But what I would do, so you see how it's still super light. 
So what I would do is between those two layers, add a blank one, grab a black brush, and I'm just gonna darken it down in here because it's too light. And this is a quick and easy way to just darken that area without reducing the opacity, which will just create even more of a light version. You know what I mean? So I'm just gonna continue with this black layer down here. All right. I can just reduce the opacity a little bit right about there. So yeah, and that's how you put a floral overlay on. And you can come here and just adjust, adjust that opacity to suit the image. Now come back to this layer, play with the opacity, see if you need less or if you need a bit more. This is a high contrast image, so more is actually working. It doesn't normally. And you can see here it's kind of light too, so I'd probably come in and very carefully add a little bit of black around her foot so that it blends a little bit better. Okay, I'm just going to add some black in here. looks like there's a straight line right there so let's see what's going on is there I don't think so nope that's just the way the floral is okay and that's pretty cute now if I wanted to make this look even more interesting I could add in some grasses over top I think that does look good though so let's go ahead and just before you flatten see how it's you can see it's over top of her skin a little bit that's when you grab a hard black brush and just come back and make sure that none of those are over top of your subject's skin this is something that I have figured out <laughs> through trial and error Sometimes I'll go ahead and flatten without checking this and later on in my edit I'll see that I did not do this and I'll be so frustrated. So just make sure that you do that every single time, especially when you're just painting over because you don't want those that backdrop to bleed onto your subject's skin for this particular look. So just come in here, make sure you brush all of that off her skin. Alrighty? Alrighty. So that's better. Not so concerned about it anywhere else. Good. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and flatten this now. And I'm gonna just adjust my crop because it definitely feels like it's, she's not the main focus in this. It's, it's too big, so we just need to kind of focus in on our subject here. I think this is a better composition. Go ahead and flatten. I'm just going to use this grass and weeds piece and this really just helps kind of sell the fake and all I do is use my eraser tool and erase the edges to make it look like it's blending a little bit more and then I'll just reduce the opacity to 
suit something like that and then just duplicate my layer flip it horizontally Just zoom in and then take a look and see what's over her skin and what maybe needs to be erased off. Like, I would just go ahead and erase this completely off her and let it appear like it's behind her leg. And this one's okay to keep on her. Right? like that and it just adds a little bit of you know 3d makes it look more like it's an actual scene as opposed to a backdrop Alrighty, okay so let's just for this last one we're just gonna go to image adjustments brightness and we're just gonna tone down the brightness a bit because if the lights coming from the top left then this would clearly be a little bit more in shadow and darker than these ones where the light would be hitting as you can see from the dress okay so that's good we're just going to go ahead and flatten this and save it now and what we're going to do next is just run it through exposure so filter exposure and it's going to default to the last filter that i used but because i've already done a few of these pictures it's going to probably be exactly what I want. So let's just take a look. Yeah, so that's exactly what I was going for. And it looks like exposure is still loading. There we go, come on. So that's before and that's after. I'll just zoom out a bit, before and after. So it tones everything down nicely, takes the highlights down a bit, gives it a little bit more of a natural skin tone and that's good enough. I did apply a quite a bit of uh, grain to this particular filter because when you do frequency separation like I did in this and that was because she had a lot of, you know, just blotchy skin tones. It does take a lot of the texture away, but by keeping that grain, and I'm at about 36 overall grain strength, focusing on the highlight version, it just adds texture back and it ends up looking realistic. So just click apply, let that do its thing, add some color toning, and then this is done. Okay, let's just take a look. This is before and this is after. And you can always reduce the opacity or the fill I tend to use fill for these because it's a little bit more blended in the highlights and shadows. So I would say that looks good. The next thing I do is check my levels. And as you can see here, my histogram doesn't go right to the right. So I always pull it so that it does. And that typically will brighten up the areas more, but it also maintains the integrity of the transitions. So that looks good. Go ahead and flatten that. And then I'm still feeling like this looks like it's cut. So I'm just going to add another layer and grab my stamp tool. And I'm just going to grab an area that has a little bit of texture like there. And if I do that right here, then it's just going to just pull everything up here. If I do that, then it's just going to look a little bit less like it was cut off right there. Might even add this in over top just to get rid of that what looks like a straight line for whatever reason. There, I think that looks a bit better. I might want to add just a little bit of something here. So don't be afraid to fill in, you know, blank spaces with more texture from other parts of the backdrop as well. It does end up 
helping. So you can see the before and the after. It just, to me, my eye kept going there because it looked like a straight line. So I do like that better. All right, flatten, save. Color toning, I typically will just use selective color. Um, before I do that, I might try an action or two. Now I have my fantasy set. I do really like, I think it's Mary Queen of Scots. So we'll run that one. What I do is I open them up, close everything off. You can see that this was a deepen action, so we're definitely going to reduce the fill on that probably to about 20. And you can see that it added a lot more yellow, which is nice with the cyan. This one here, we're not going to bother with this. I mean, you could reduce the fill all the way down and see what you get, but I knew that I didn't want to add matte to this one. This is cool. I don't want to add cool. This is toned down. I don't want that. And then this is just a vignette, which we don't need. So really, the only thing I used was that first one in that action. So if you consider that not every action is going to work on every single image that you want it to, and what I do is I just pick and choose what's within that action to make sure that it's going to affect everything better. So Princess Grace in the action set here is just a black and white princess diana this one could be cool let's turn everything off and look we don't need this darker because we've already done that this just adds more red which actually doesn't look too bad but i might reduce that i find that when you add too much red to an image and then you go to print it it's way too much red okay so this is interesting Let's let's um, double click it, pull up our blend if, and see if we can make this blend if kind of look more interesting. Pull this down opacity about 21. This is the one we wanted. Let's try it again. There we go. Okay, so we're in blend if we, if we pull our blacks to the right. That actually looks really cool, doesn't it? Hold down your alter option key and split those two just to blend them. Click OK. I actually like that. I think that really looks more artistic, more unique. And this is our <coughs> this is our finishing. Again, I'm going to pull this up, see what happens if I use the blend if. Probably too much. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to reduce our fill way down. Close the group, that's before, that's after. So you can get so many different looks by using so many different types of actions and overlays or doing your own color toning, right? Um, I think the main thing to figure out is do you want natural skin colors like that or do you want to go a little more artistic with maybe some blues or cyans, something like that. You can always reduce the overall opacity of the group as well right about there which I think probably is a bit better so I'm gonna stick there with the Princess Diana that was my fantasy set okay now I go into my selective color go to my blacks now complementary colors would be for instance if I put red or yellow into my blacks or shadows I would need to make sure that my neutrals or my highlights were cooler so if we add some red that's what it looks like. It almost looks like an, a magenta. And I don't 
necessarily want that. We could add cyans. If you did cyans like about plus five, like this, you could increase the brightness of those blacks or you could pull them down. I typically always go up minus one or minus two in my blacks when I do this. If we add in a little bit of blue, then it just kind of makes the neutral or the skin colors pop and look a little bit warmer. Um, we could just come in and reduce the fill. That's what before looks like, that's after. So now we've just added a pretty much a bunch of more cyans to the environment. I'm going to do another selective color. I'm going to go to the neutrals this time. I don't want to go into the blues for neutral because then it gets too cool. I don't want to go too yellow because then it looks a little off, but I do want some, so I'm probably going to just stick to a plus two and probably a plus a minus one in the reds. You can reduce the brightness by pulling it to the right, or you can bring it up a bit by pulling it to the left. So probably minus two. And usually I will leave this like that and then I will do another levels and just check my histogram. <clears throat> so again, my histogram is not touching the right, so I pull it up. This is the time when you can add a little bit of matte to your blacks, something like this. And I usually do for print because when you're printing, you can't typically get pure black, right? It's always gonna be in gradations of gray. So I'd like to take those pitch blacks and just add a little bit of matte to them, which will make it print a little bit better. So that's what that looks like. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, so that's how I will shoot, edit, and add a floral backdrop to one of these kind of portraits, but definitely the light setup, as you saw in my shooting portion, is the most important part. And of course, you have to get your posing, styling your subject is always going to create a much more impactful image than, you know, not styling it. So anyways, I hope that you got something out of this and any questions or comments, please feel free to put them below. And I will see you in the next video.